Oof. Kina Kwe, guys. It's a bit cold at the moment. <laughs> so I'm just wrapped up nice and cold. Wrapped up nice and warm. It's 10 degrees, so <laughs> it's actually not that cold compared to like other places in the world, but I, I'm, I'm feeling it. So I've got even gloves on indoors. But um, what I want to talk about today, I've been thinking about... Oh, I'll just get myself at a better level. What I've been thinking about... I've been thinking about like um, businesses, competition even though I'm not really at that stage yet, but I kind of want to share an idea with you guys. So last, yesterday I was doing this um, module for, as you know, I do a bit of weight, I do weightlifting and I've got a competition coming up in a few weeks. It's like a big competition, but like I'm not, the, I'm not the most amazing, amazing lifter. I'm just an average lifter going to like a pretty decent competition, but I'm an average guy. I'm not saying like I'm a professional, but yeah, I had to do this module. It was to do with um, drugs. So like, uh, drugs free uh, drug sport new zealand so they it's basically a module to make sure you understand the rules about drug testing and what's considered um you know against the rules like for example if you're chosen for a drug test um like i'm never going to be tested because i'm not going to be at a level that a competitive level but um some things that you need to know are for example if you get chosen for a drug test which apparently is random um, you know because they just pick the top three, test the, drug, the top three lifters. Like, what's the point of testing people in the middle? But anyway, they want to make it look random. So you, you test, um, yeah, so you test someone, if, if you get tested, you have to remain in sight of the cha the chaperone or the person who's testing you. You can't leave like in between that time. Um, so the rules like that. And then if you do breach those rules, you can get banned. Um, and it's not just the athletes. If the athletes are caught cheating, if like, let's say a coach is distributing um, performance enhancing drugs, that coach can be um, stopped from all sports. So these things that we need to know, and that's why we had to complete the module. But that's not really the point. Well, it kind of is, but it got me thinking about um, performance enhancing drugs and sport because in high level competitive sport and like a lot of people that I follow, um, Drugs is like the norm. It's, it's pretty much given that a person, if they were to win gold, they're doping in some regards. Like, I don't think it's definitely not, definitely not the case with every sport, but there's like this culture or what I follow is that if this person is number one or top in the world, I'm saying not, not in New Zealand, but in the world, it's most likely they're on performance enhancing drugs. And it's not about, um, it's like not about being honest, it's about not getting caught, if that makes sense. So the idea is like people take performance enhancing drugs. It's not about, it, it gets taken, but the skill is not getting caught or being able to um, avoid detection or bribing people, um, if that's even the case. Because um, it was a bit sad. So we have all this, we have all these declarations in place, um, but it's like a given that a person, if they, to, it's to reach number one, they're going to have to cheat in some way. Or I think in, in a lot of sports, like if you want to break into like, the, like for example, NFL, you have to be on performance enhancing drugs. There's no way you can compete. And I wrote this article. It's, it's called, um, do you have to cheat to win? I put it on my blog and I'll link it down below. And there's two videos in there. There's one video of Lance Armstrong. So we know Lance Armstrong, um, seven time, no, well, no longer. He was seven time winner of the Tour de France, and um, there's a, I've got a video here, I don't know if I'll play it to you guys, but... I want to go back and, and ask you some questions now, uh, moving on to the 2004 Tour de France. Uh, you attended the deposition of Miss uh, Betsy Andrew, did you not? Correct. You probably can't hear it, but in that, in that video, he talks about how... He, uh, it was like a deposition hearing and he was asked, do you take performance enhancing drugs? And he said, no, he doesn't, didn't do any size of performance enhancing drugs. All his victories were his training and his hard work. And then the video later, I've got one linked with, um, Here we are in Austin, Texas. Lance Armstrong at Oprah Winfrey. You texted to the Associated Press and said, I told So yeah, this is years later where he was discovered to be a, he took performance enhancing drugs. So he denied it in the beginning, but then afterwards he found out. And then it is quite incredible that, um, yeah, I mean, I guess a lot of people feel upset by that because he lied to our faces. He lied in front of us. When they do the Olympic oath, um, the Olympic oath says that they're not going to be taking performance-enhancing performance drugs. But yet we have this culture where it's pretty much a given that like, to get number one gold, and, and especially weightlifting, you have to be on drugs. And then years later, they, they, get, they get popped, which is a bit disappointing because it's like, it's a scam, right? It feels like a scam, but I think it's really important to realize that with these types of sports, sorry, I just turn off my phone. I'll just, I'll just 
just my answer the question. Oops. It's really important to realize that for Lance Armstrong to win seven, like back then, he's, he, he technically he's not won now because he's been stripped of those titles, but to win seven times was an absolute outstanding feat, even with drugs. And I think the point he was trying to make was everyone was doping at that level. So um, if everyone was doping at that level, it made the playing field level. And then for him to win seven times, it was amazing. And I think there was a documentary called Icarus, which is on Netflix, which is, I think it was a great documentary. And it showed that if, when the guy was doing a concoction of performance enhancing drugs with a doctor, um, he wasn't able to, he actually did worse than he did last year while cycling clean. So it shows that there are more variables at play towards success. Um, but yeah, it was, it was interesting because that made me think about business. Now, a bit of a segue into business. I know we're five minutes in and I really appreciate you guys for sticking around. I got me thinking about business and ethics and I even wrote some notes down. So let me get some notes. It even got me thinking about business. So we know in sports to win, you have to cheat in some way. It's not about working hard or being skillful. It's about how you can avoid detection or the rules or avoiding... Um, avoiding detection, basically getting away with cheating. That's why I think it is. And to translate into business, I don't know if it's the same thing. Like I've got these, I'm starting a YouTube channel. I want to be an entrepreneur in the future. I know no one cares, but that's kind of like my goal. And I'm really making this video, not for, not just for my friends, but to see if anyone else is on that journey and just to share my ideas. That's the whole point of this video and why this, why this channel exists. And it got me thinking about business because for business, money comes first. If you have stakeholders, they want to make sure you're prof profitable and making money. If you want to survive, you need money to live. <laughs> so I understand for pe most people, the priority is money. It's never... For me, I'm at the stage of kind of self-actualization. I'm not saying that I'm rich and I can do anything I want, but I think I've got all those boxes ticked of shelter, relations, relationships with my family. Um, like to be honest, money isn't a really big problem at the moment in terms of being able to feed myself for the next week, and I'm fortunate in that regard. So what I want to do has to be actually fulfilling. So and I don't think more money is going to make that fulfilling, but I understand that money does bring freedom in regards that if I want to have every day is a Saturday, or if I want to retire my parents, or if I want to um, have really big goals like be able to travel the world and understand different cultures and start a huge business or like having to develop myself as a person, as an individual who understands different cultures to create the business or create some sort of organization that can provide a positive benefit in the world. That involves quite a lot of money. But I understand with business, money comes first. It's all about having the most ethical business at the end of the day. So what I'm trying to get at is I think with businesses, it's potentially not how smart the idea is. Um, it's cutthroat up there and then to really win it's more about how unethical how immoral you can be with getting away with it without getting caught or without the public seeing you as it being as being an immoral business so yeah that's kind of what i'm thinking about this in a really negative sense i could be wrong but it'd be interesting to see what you guys think and like kind of sharing the idea with you and this really got me thinking when I was sitting down in my off, like an optometry, I was thinking about the in myopia and I made a video about uh, kind of Jack Steiner and why I'm scared of him and kind of everything in that video happened. I mean, I got, I believe I was looking through the analytics of that video and that video got shared on either an email or a Facebook group and a lot of people, a lot of people came in and got disliked quite a lot. And I think it was people from mainly from the in myopia community. And there was one guy who mentioned that <laughs> it's impossible for me. I'll try and find the, the post. Um, like I know it's not representative of everyone from in my opinion, but there was one guy who came in and he said like he couldn't believe that he thought I was using a translator app um, because I've got an Asian name and I look Asian so I can't sound like this I can't sound like a, a Kiwi accent it's like to him he can't understand that um, maybe I'm, I'm Sri Lankan from origin but you can live in a different country and develop a different accent like I was born in New Zealand hence I've developed the accent I speak English and I um, haven't I don't have a typical I don't know Asian accent whatever he meant by that he or she meant by that I mean I could try and find that post for you um, it was deleted immediately it's a media I'll just find it for you guys one moment yeah there we go Did I get that in there so that's a bit disappointing you get comments like that. It might, it might be reversed for you guys, so I do apologize <laughs> if you can read backwards. 
Yeah, but it says, um, because of because your looks and your voice are not matching your name, is an Asian name, and Asians don't sound like that. Keep fooling people, blah, blah, blah. Oh, which translator app do you use? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of stuff like that. So it got me thinking, I got a little lot of negative feedback, in other words, and then I was thinking, like, what's the point of working really hard to fight against the river? Like, we, we know that there are people who are, um, who... Like, I'm just comparing my life to Jake Steiner's. So I'm working in an optometry clinic. I'm sleep deprived. I kind of don't want to be there. And I'm pretty sure Jake Steiner's on a beach somewhere in Vietnam, enjoying women, enjoying drinks, enjoying, like, an amazing king a king life. Who's living a better life? <laughs> you know, what comes first? And because there are already people who are out there, like, with that video, not a lot of people supported optometrists. There, was not, there weren't a lot of, there's one guy, I think, so I really appreciate that dude, but there weren't a lot of people supporting optometry in that comment. It was mainly negative, mostly dislikes. So that kind of gets, that kind of points this picture in my head that there are people who don't like optometrists or they prefer active focus or that kind of material where it's sort of a misinterpretation of um, the the scientific literature out there. But, I mean, just because you can read scientific literature doesn't mean you're an expert in the field. Not saying that I'm an expert, but that got me thinking that there are people who who believe in active focus. They're negatively biased towards optometrists. They don't view optometry as like a a, 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 a profession or a particular career. And I remember because there, there was one comment of a guy saying like, you would never believe an optometrist fully. You should do your own research. But that's like. If I were to fly a plane, like, would I learn how to fly a plane before I hop on a, a plane? Like, you have to trust the individual that you see to a certain extent. Like, for example, if someone's doing a surgery, I wouldn't research how to learn how to do surgery just so I can, just in case something, just, just, just in case the doctor doesn't do it right. Or I wouldn't learn how to fly a plane because just in case the pilot doesn't know how to fly the plane properly. There's a certain level of trust you have to associate. And you only have so much time, right? That's why you pay people to do certain things. So you don't have to spend your year studying, for example, law or accounting. Um, just where you can hire an accountant to outsource that kind of stuff. But anyway, there are people out there who perceive optometry as negative. And what I could do is, because I'm an optometrist, I could just sort of create content around, yeah, active focus works. Or, um, sorry, not active focus, but anyway, natural eye methods work. And people already have the confirmation bias and they'll agree with me. And because I'm an optometrist, I'm more of an authority figure. And then they'll create more controversy with their, with their, where... It would be like a trope where, oh, this optometrist believes in, is against his own, what, what he studied, and he believes in, in active focus, he's promoting it, and therefore that's going to increase, that's going to increase that trust, and what I could then do is sell an online course or coaching as well, and that's how I make money, that's how I get my freedom, rather than fighting against the river, trying to be, trying to do it the right way, you could do it the pernicious way, and for a person like me, I think that would eat up my morals, but if you can get to the stage where you ignore your morals and then you just focus on the selfishness, the money you're getting, because you're not really caring about the people you're making content for. You just sort of, you, you see, you just, you just, you're, just going, you're just going with the flow. <laughs> and that's how you create a business, it seems that these days. But I don't believe in that, guys. I've got strong morals. If I ever did that, it would eat me up inside. Like, uh, I know it's not right. And how it definitely eat me up inside. And that's where I got thinking about, if you want to, in athletics, I think, you need, you only, you only got a limited window to, to win. I mean, you only have a few years at your peak to win. That means you need to take the short, you need to take shortcuts. There's only a short window, or you need to take those short-term games, those short-term wins. And if you're thinking short-term, that's where you have to cheat, unfortunately. I feel so bad for the athletes who do do it the right way. I, I don't know what goes on. Like it's always it's always behind closed curtains. I don't know what's real. I'm just making this video to just share my idea out there. I'm not accusing anyone of anything, but I just want to share my ideas because it links really closely to business. And I want to do business the right way. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to cheat people. I don't want to be unethical. I want to do things the right way. I want to do something that I believe I believe in because athletes have a short window a short so they have to have the short-term games but in business we're lucky to have long-term games like 10 years five years 20 years projections and i think that if you stay true to yourself your brand that will persist because if you have a quick win or you're a phony sure you'll make money in the short term but then your people will see you as a as a fake as a phony and that's going to destroy your business in the long term and the person who's 
focusing on their brand, focusing on their values, being true and honest, they will last a long time. They'll last in the long run. So I'll link that. I'll link my blog post down below about do you have to cheat to win? Um, because another thing I, I'm gonna, sorry, I, I just remembered another thing I found I, I was thinking about was really with really big businesses, big corporations. I don't know if you guys find that with big corporations, you find that their product and how they treat their employees is not as good as a smaller business. So yeah, they make the most money, big corporations, but they aren't the best. They don't provide the best product or the best service, or they're, they're not the best working conditions for their employees. Not always the case, but that's what I find, and that's really interesting because it's like the classic example is McDonald's. So I think in the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. He talks about how can you, you you can probably make a burger burger better than McDonald's, but who's the bigger business, you or McDonald's? And it shows that McDonald's has a better delivery system. They've got better marketing. They've got a better infrastructure to deliver an average burger, and but they make the most money. So it's just kind of, I think it's it's more it's, the, it's like the limitation of capitalism where a business is optimized to make money, and the way you make money is through really good marketing, ease of use making quick burgers, fast burgers, rather than that high quality product, which I think is more niche. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this, but like, I, like I'm really hoping this kind of idea just sort of creates a discussion and I'd really like to hear what you guys think. So I really appreciate you guys watching all the way to this video. And remember, you can be moral and ethical and, and still be a good, provide a high quality business. I mean, there are always going to be people who complain about what you do. You're always going to, you're never going to win everyone's hearts. So there's always going to be some sort of controversy. Even controversy gets the clicks in terms of if you go, this business is doing a bad things, so you're going to get clicks in that way. It's like this woke, the woke kind of um, movement. Because that also creates views and clicks, which in itself is like a form of being disingenuous. Cool. So that's kind of a really big topic I want to talk to you guys about. Let me know down in the comments below. I'll link my blog post down in the comments below as well. And like always, guys, stay focused and talk soon.